Hey there! For our final pillow decorating tutorial, I'm going to show you how to decorate your own pillow with a stencil. I've got my basic pillow cover and my pillow form and all of my stencil supplies. Now we just need to figure out how to use all that stencil supplies. Are you having problems? I'm here to help. <laughs> I'm Stephanie here and you know, I have a stenciling course going on and um, I just overheard that you are doing a stencil and I thought I'd pop in and help you out. Well, that would sure would be great, Stephanie. Awesome, okay. <laughs> so yeah, it looks like you have everything I need, which is fabulous, and I love that you made this amazing pillow, and I love working with burlap, and my stencilers are so into burlap, so this is gonna be great. So the first thing we're gonna do is, I just have this plain piece of cardboard. It's, you know, you can find them obviously in the trash, or if you get something lovely from Amazon, you can just break that apart. Great, and I just want to mention that this is the same basic pillow form we have been making again and again with our zipper added on. And something else I want to mention is when you're working with burlap, the fibers are so loose that I did use a zigzag stitch here, as you can see, yeah. to make it help hold together better. That was a great tip. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is the reason why we're putting cardboard in between this burlap is because it is so porous. We want to make sure when we're working with our ink here, that we are going to make sure that it's not seeping through onto the pillow or onto the other side of the burlap. That's not going to be cute. You don't want that. So the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out just how big your pillow is. So I just went ahead and marked the center of when I measured this out. And that's where I know that my, my middle stencil, that's where it's going to be. Perfect. And guess what? Speaking of where it's going to be, <laughs> oh we're, boy. We're using a B. So um, what I did here is I just, it's very hard to see because I just use a pen, a pencil. And I just went and marked in the length of my stencil right here. You see how that is, Lise? So yeah. It's going gonna to be a little guideline. So All right. Burlap especially can be a little bit hard to work with, you know? So you need a little bit of guidelines. I feel like it, I get a lot more value and help out of using a little bit of guidelines. True, and the nice thing about marking on fabric is it washes right out. Exactly, and if I did make a mistake, what would be the best way to get pencil off so I can start over? Well, you know, the great thing about pencils is they erase. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, another good thing though is since we are stenciling, whatever you're marking, you're just gonna paint right over. That's very true. So we don't need to erase any good marks. And the next thing, I wanna do kind of a cute, kind of rustic type of feel design. Um, and so I just found these beautiful leaves that are just gonna be so cute when I circle around my cute little bee. Those adorable. are adorable. And yes. as you can see, of course, I need a little bow. I, everyone needs a little bit more bows in their lives, I feel. Absolutely. And these are already all pre-measured out. Like so I said, cute. all I did is I would take my little pencil right here and I just went ahead and notched it right on top, the bottom of the stencil the sides of the bow, so everything lines up perfectly. And when we're getting ready to use our stencils, we will just use our tape. What do you think, Lisa, does that look good? I think it's super cute. Are these overlapping? You know what, they are going to be a little bit overlapping. So they touch? They are gonna to touch because I thought it would be really cute That's if it cute. looks like the bow is tying these two leaves that together. That is very cute. And we're gonna go over on how to work with two different colors and when your stencils are overlapping. So stay tuned for that. Yeah, and actually Stephanie does have her very own series on stencil making. So right now this is just a quick tip on working with our pillows and curtains, which we love so much. However, if you really want to get into stencil making and the whole world that that entails, this girl knows what's going on and you should definitely check it out. I think you guys will get a kick out of it. So I would love to see you there at my course. So as you see, at least if you want to grab some tape and maybe oh, just sure. line up here, we're going to tape all these guys down. It's not super necessary, but again, burlap can be a little tricky to work with, so I do like to take some very uh, tacky blue painter's tape, and this is super delicate, so it's just going to come right off. It's not going to harm your fabric or anything like that. We're going to show you, obviously we, we oh. were just able to do one side because we will be using our beautiful leaf pattern twice over and you know what if your stencil isn't completely lined up symmetrically that's okay because when you put the pillow inside of it it's going to move and shift around i'm sure it'll look great whatever happens yes and as you can see my leaf pattern and my bows are overlapping 
And I did not tape down this bow part because I want to be able to move my leaf pattern when we're done stenciling it. Smart. So, and then we'll go ahead and switch it to the other side and we'll do the same thing. But I just wanted to show you guys, I'm not taping this down so it doesn't interrupt with our two stencils layering on top. Cool, man. Okay, so you know what is next, Lisa? Are we gonna paint it? Yes, we are. Fabulous. Okay, so what I have here is I have fabric paint and I just have white and black because you know, you can never go wrong. So true, white and black, my favorite. I know they are your favorite, yeah. that's why I brought them today. Oh, she knows me so well. And I have these lovely, fun stencil little... Uh, well, that looks like a sponge. It's a sponge, Lisa, <laughs> that's what it is, thank you. And I just happen to have two. Oh, lucky day. <laughs> So what we're gonna do is I found for burlap, I like using these little sponges better than using a brush. You can use a stencil brush if you want. Right. But I just found, we were kind of experimenting before we decided to do this. And I just found that the, the paint with a sponge with burlap, it was, just some, it was just a beautiful thing. So we're just gonna go ahead. All natural materials too, yeah. burlap, sponges. Maybe that's why. Bees, just love it. Yeah, <laughs> so you know, we're gonna go ahead and just have a firm touch when I'm not, uh, as you Kay. see, nothing is on. I'm just going to practice here and we're just going to kind of dab in, dab in. Like when you're applying makeup. Oh, yes, exactly. Oh. That's a great way to look at it. I learned that in one of my other makeup tutorials. I already poured a little bit of our black paint out. I'm just going to dab it in our little paint area. I'm gonna, so excited for this. Yes. Go ahead and dab I've it been looking bit. forward to this moment actually for quite some time. Wow. Yeah. I am honored. So I'm just going ahead and we're not taking that much paint on it. We don't want to saturate it too much. We want a pretty even coat. So actually less is more when we're going into the stenciling. That looks great. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and just start on the B. You can start wherever you want. All right. Start from Let's the bottom. Go. Then we're here. We're, we're good. We're going to work on this together. This is kind of fun. I'm just dabbing. You're just dabbing. And then I guess it's getting kind of narrow up here. So should I be more like careful not to get outside the lines on this side? Yes. We don't want any, if you notice that your sponge or brush is too big, we can go ahead and switch it to something else that's smaller. You know, we wanna make sure that everything stays within the lines. And if you find Lisa, we can always switch because mine's a little mm, bit thinner. Let's switch a roo. Let's just switch a roo on that. <laughs> Ooh, Look at us, disaster. switch a roo in. <laughs> reason why we don't need to tape down everything in the world is because in the are, world <laughs> is because we are going from an up and down straight motion if we are sliding with a paintbrush that's where we get bleed and that's where we have right. problems cool yeah and then you know I also want to point out how I'm so glad you decided to use fabric paint because when we're working with fabric if we weren't using fabric paint we wouldn't be able to wash this that's so, way to think ahead, girl. You know it. I actually brought out a couple of these little stencil brushes I got here here because it looks like, you yeah, know, I'm having maybe trouble. we need a little, we don't want to have Lisa, you know, work, <laughs> huh. work too hard here. It's all right. We're going to get Oh, right look there. at that. Again, I'm doing up and down motion. This is called pouncing. Pouncing. Yeah. It Good. reminds me of a cat. <laughs> you know, the Right, because cats pounce, yes. <laughs> So that's a fun visual that Thank I you. think about when I'm doing this. As you can see, I'm lifting up our bow. Don't worry about this overlapping area. We're actually going to be covering it with a gray bow because I think, you know, I love white and black, but with this particular color of burlap, I think gray might show up better. So I made a little mixed, you know, a little bit of uh, black and white to make our own custom color. Custom gray. Mm -hmm. Fun fact, gray, black, and white are not actually colors. What? They are either the presence or absence of light. There you go. Not an actual pigment. Yeah. Well, I learned something today. I am just full of facts. That color theory class was one of my favorites. Lisa is definitely <laughs> full of it. Okay, now that I went in with my little tiny stencil brush here, I think I got all the corners. And when I think I'm ready, I'm just gonna go ahead and lift up completely oh, straight. Look at that. The reveal. Oh, here, let me help you. 
Thank you. Look Thank you. at ahead, that. that. That looks just gorgeous. Oh my gosh. I love it. I love it too. So let's do our B, our B dude. A B dude. All right. Ah, he's gorgeous, darling. So cute. Love it. So as you see, this is kind of coming along. Um, so I don't want to do my bow just yet because we were going to be reversing our beautiful stencil. And when we're going to reverse it, guess what? We have to go wash it because we don't want any of this you, nastiness. Very important. And it's so easy to wash your stencil. Just go ahead and take some warm water, not hot. We don't want to warp it or anything. And just take a nice cloth and just go with the stencil. You don't want to rub it back and forth. That could damage the plastic. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll be right back. All right. Okay, guys, I'm back and I washed off my stencil and I already applied it just how we did the first one. I made sure they kind of lined up and they looked as even as possible. You know, we're not robots here, so if it's a little <laughs> bit crooked, that's okay. So true. Yes. So um, if you want to help me out, Lise. Sure. Getting in there. Black on black. Black on burlap. Now, Lisa, <laughs> yes. I love your enthusiasm, but let me tell you, <laughs> What I would really like to be a better successful stencil is that even though I am not getting the full effect of the color I want, to do it lightly is going to be better because we can always go over it instead of making it super dark and then having to adjust and we could um, actually get more bleed that way and we don't want any bleed, no. All right. So let me actually turn this a little bit closer to you because that's going to be a little bit excellent. easier for you. That is some excellent advice. Yes. I was, I was definitely struggling. That's okay, that's what I'm here for. You know, I'm just gonna let you figure this out. Uh, I think we're gonna let the expert handle things. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you guys now what we're just starting to do. It's a little bit closer look of our stencil process. As you can see, it's not super black just yet. That's okay, we don't want it to bleed out. So this is kind of the process where it's starting to get there. Looks good. So Stephanie, hmm. I found something and I think you are going to love it. The big reveal. Oh my God, I actually don't know what you're gonna do. I was searching in our cupboards hey. and I found some yellow paint. Wow. And I'm thinking this might look super, super cute on the bow. Yes, okay, let's do it. Yeah, I think we need that color pop. Yes, let's see. How this Should we lift it? turned out. Bum, and bum, remember, bum, we are going to lift completely straight up. Straighting, straight up. La. Ho, Beautiful. Ho, look at that. That looks awesome. I love it. That is so pretty. Go ahead and That just looks like it was professionally printed on there. I love it. Yeah. So next up, we are going to do our little bow, and you have our beautiful paint here. Let's Color pop. I'm gonna use a bigger stencil brush for this one. If you want to help, do you want to help? One <gasps> side. Sure, I'll try. It was your idea. All right. Let's get this paint so, close. Just get some paint on there, Thank and you. what was that word again? Pounce. Yeah, pouncing. And look, I am taking off quite a bit of paint, as you can see, and Lisa, you're following my lead, so I appreciate that. Because less is more when we're stenciling. We can always add more layers to this later on. Good to know. I'm going to remember that one. We're like in harmony right now. <laughs> This is great. Great call on the yellow. Yeah, I was pretty stoked. You never know what we'll find. We've got a lot going on in our studio, as I'm sure you've all heard. So. Today is quite noisy. I apologize for that. But yeah, it's, it's fun what we end up finding. My little bow here was a little coming up and I want to make sure it's a nice, beautiful edge, so I'm just holding that down. Mm. Oh, I can't wait to see what it looks like. Oh, 
Okay guys, welcome back. And as you can see here, we allowed our dry time for our lovely stencil to dry up. And this looks so good. Yes, and it looks beautiful. Be beautiful. Nice job. And um, you know, so I just think it looks beautiful and rustic and it looks perfect in your pillow. It really does look great. I love just how simple the stencil really just added that pop. And you know what else I love? It goes so well oh with the pillows I was making earlier. So as you can see here, I did finish my embroidery piece. I added my French knots and I did outline the whole thing. Lovely. So cute. Um, you know, I kind of also want to start embroidering this guy, so you better Ooh. stop me. <laughs> it could look really cute. Yeah. Um, there's just so many cool things you can do with stencils, thread, needle, really anything. I mean, you've been to the store, you've seen all those cute pillows out there. Imagine what you can do. The possibilities are endless. So once again, thank you, Stephanie, so hey, much for you. showing us how. Uh, I had a great time working with you. Yeah, me too. It was really fun to show up and <laughs> teach you guys a little something something. Great. Um, well, there's a little bit more coming your way, so stay tuned. Thank you. <laughs> we are going to do one of my favorite projects. Here I have a 3D pillow, a chrysanthemum pillow, if you want to be more specific. It's super easy. You're only going to need a few supplies and it's only going to take you a few minutes and you're going to have this great quality 3D effect.